It's time for an elimination match in Group B between two players, one of whom has already had a match up here on the main stage. Coming out from Israel, the two-time world champion, let's welcome Shahar Shenhar. Ah, after thorough practice coming out on stage, he nails it the second time around. Shahar is once again playing Esper Control and Mono White Aggro. His opponent, you may know her as Sky Bills from the United States of America. It is Allison Maino. Allison, a fan of Galta Primal Hunger, which is the perfect card for any Magic deck. And I'm talking to you both standard and commander players. She'll be running Green Red Aggro and Mono Red Aggro. Let's get into the match. All right, so we will have, as D9 mentioned, Esper and Mono White versus Green Red Aggro and Red Deck wins. So Skyball's opting for the aggressive approach. No control, no none of that. I am going to go fast and I'm going to smack face and you will have to deal with me. Yeah, and I like the approach that Skybills took going into this tournament. Of course, you have access to multiple aggressive strategies, mm -hmm. and I like picking two very different aggressive decks. Yeah. We have, of course, a green-based aggressive deck with lots of large creatures, and then on the other side, a very, very hyper-aggressive deck. So oh, yeah. I think both of those decks have good and bad matchups, and I think even when you're bringing two aggressive decks, it is important to bring decks that have two different strategies so that you cannot get taken advantage of in game three and make it so that it's extremely easy for your opponent to choose what deck to play in that third and final game. All right, so taking a look at the player's decks, this is Shahar's Esper Control. Key cards, of course, being Kaya's Wrath and Teferi, Hero of Dominari. We're very familiar with this Esper list so far. Yeah, one copy of Nezahal there, Ooh. over there in the corner. So a little spice, uh, expecting a lot of Esper Control in the field and making sure you have kind of that mirror breaker in your deck. Oh, I do like that. Yeah. A creature, yay. <laughs> All right, taking a look at Shahar's Mono White Aggro. Again, you want to go fast. You want to get all your one drops out. You want your Loxodon convoking every single little one drop you have and just, yeah, finish it off with Unbreakable Formation. I love this card. Yeah, and one thing that you actually see, what you've seen in kind of this best of one environment that you're in, that we're in, is more copies of Unbreakable Formation in the main. And this card has been truly impressive in best of one because not only is it, it's kind of like what I like to call the mirror breaker. Mm -hmm. In the mirror, both players are playing out a bunch of creatures, putting them onto the battlefield, and it's all about just having the maximum number of ways to pump up your entire force. Unbreakable Formation not only allows you to pump your team, but it gives them in Vigilance and Indestructible, allowing you to just Alpha Strike, attack with all your creatures, and not worry about the repercussions of that attack. On top of that, we're expecting a lot of Esper control. Oh, yeah. So Unbreakable Formation doubles as a way to give your creatures protection against sweepers. All right, taking a look at Skybull's Green Red Aggro. Seeing the Land War Elves, Growth Chamber Guardians who like to go and fetch their friends from the deck. Gruul Spellbreaker, and of course, Galtz of Primal Hunger, which we have seen already today. My favorite card in this 60 card deck yeah. is that one copy of Thud. Oh, yes. So Thud oh. allows you to sack a creature to deal <laughs> damage equal to the creature's power to any target. So if you sacrifice a Galta oh. or a Nullhide Ferox, Ow. it's a lot of damage to the face. That now, hurts. one interesting thing about this is most of the mono green decks that you've seen in the past usually splash red for Collision Colossus. Mm -hmm. But Skybill's actually opting for Gruul Spellbreaker, a premium three mana creature, to kind of slot into that three mana slot in this deck. Uh, Gruul Spellbreaker is, of course, quite good against the Mono Red deck because you can't target your opponent on their turn with Gruul Spe Spellbreaker on the board. Taking a look at the Mono Red deck from Skybills. Pretty standard, no surprises in this list. Yeah, I like this. 20 lands. Oh, yeah. 4-4-4-4-4-4-4. Four, 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 four. Yeah. Basically, all the best red cards in the format, I'm just going to play four copies of and make sure I play the full 20 lands. We've actually seen some players cheat on lands, mm -hmm. but in, in this instance, Skybo is opting for the full 20 lands because, of course, it is still important to hit your land drops to be able to cast your Experimental Frenzy. All right, I am very much looking forward to this matchup. Which decks they get, I'm not sure, but let's take a look at some of the player profiles first. Shahar Shenhar started playing Magic in 2007 as made Mythic, and he's played in 30 Mythic Championships so far. That is incredible. Yeah, Shahar Shenhar has been a fixture of the Mythic Championships for an extremely long time. I mean, he started 
He burst out onto the scene basically as a kid. He was 13 or 14 years old when he started playing competitively, won world championships at a very early age, and has really not slowed down. It's insane. Skybills. All right, let's take a look at the opening hands. We are ready to rock and roll, friends. And the opening hand here for Skybills, we have two mountains, runaway steamkin. This doesn't look too shabby. Be a shadow pyromancer, wizard's lightning. Yeah, it's got a nice mix. You have your two lands and you have your spells. I imagine this is just the type of hand that you can't mulligan. It'd be nice to have a one mana creature as this... well to go with it, but still pretty strong. Exactly that. This opening hand from Shahar, this looks like almost perfect for a, for the control. Yeah, absolutely. And given that Shahar knows that no matter what he's playing up, he gets randomly paired against in this round, it's going to be a creature matchup. There will be creatures so to kill, yes. things that he's looking out for are just making sure that he has a handful of removal spells. The awkward part is Cry of the Carnarium is a card that's very, very solid in mm -hmm. the mono-red matchup, yes. but against a deck full of Nullhide Feroxes and Steel Leaf Champions, not quite as effective there. Not quite as effective. So the player is now deciding if they will keep these hands. I, If I saw this hand, I would be like, yes, please, give me. I, I want to play that. Yeah, it, sound, it looks like a fairly easy keep for both players. Shahar does have... The, the Buddy lands there in the Drowned Catacomb and the Glacial Fortress and the Swamp. So I imagine he's going to need to lead out with that Glacial Fortress as he does not have a way to put that into play untapped currently mm -hmm. because he does not have an island or a plane to hand. Yeah. But turn two, Flutter Razor is available for him as soon as we get underway here. And he can take a peek into Skybull's hand. I'm yeah. guessing the thing that they would want, that Shahar would want to target first would possibly be Light Up the Stage. Is that is the primary draw engine for the Mono Red deck? Or would they go for the Experimental Frenzy? Uh, well, Experimental Frenzy is extremely difficult to deal with, but the Esper Control deck does have multiple copies of Mortify Correct. to answer the Experimental Frenzy. So a lot of it will also just depend on what Shahar has in hand. Shahar, of course, will have an extra draw step, so he will use all the information at his disposal to figure out what actually is correct to take with that Dottie Razor. And I imagine, given the way that I've seen Shahar play uh, so far in this tournament, mm -hmm. he's going to take the right card. All right. So, for example, here, if you take a look, uh, if we, you know, we previously saw Skybill's hand mm -hmm. of Runaway Steenkin and the issue of Pyromancer, Prior to Carnarium is going to do a really good job of cleaning up that board. So he might just opt not to take those creatures and instead take one of the high-impact spells in the hand, like Light Up the Stage and Experimental Frenzy. All right, we are ready to rock and roll, friends. Let's get underway. Mountain Go from Skybills. And as you predicted, Glacial Fortress hits the board. Turn two, Runaway Steamkin, possibly. The issue of Pyromancer instead, going for two damage on Shahar. Yeah, very interesting there, opting to just go for maximum damage here and playing the Pyromancer instead of the commonly played turn two Runaway Steamkin. Body Razor now taking a peek in the hand of Skybills, deciding what I don't want to see cast from yeah, my opponent's hand. This is pretty interesting. I think Light Up the Stage is probably the card that you want to take because Shahar has another Thought Erasure in hand to be able to get rid of that Experimental Frenzy at a later point in this game. All right, Runaway Steamkin now hitting the board. Pyromancer in for the two damage. Oh, and Cry the Carnarium is going to be great here. Oh, this is going to hurt a little bit. Oh, goodbye, creatures. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, Skybills almost ran at that Gitu Lava Runner prior to casting that Runaway Steamkin. Of course, we know that the Steamkin grows as you play the red spell. So you want to play that first, and she does catch herself. Now, what's in the hand of Shahar to deal with these creatures on the board? Unfortunately, no other Cry of the Carnarium. Possibly another Thought Erasure just to get rid of the Wizard's Lightning, or uh, Experimental Frenzy, I think, might be the pick here. Yeah, just I, in case I, of the next land. Yeah, so Shahar has a couple of interesting options here. He can choose to go for Thought Erasure, get rid of that Experimental Frenzy in mm -hmm. Skybills' hand. Alternatively, he can just choose to cast Mastermind's Acquisition and get something like a Lyra Dawnbringer, which oh, would yeah. maybe help break open the game. But it looks like he doesn't. He is not interested in playing his, his Shocklands untapped. All right. Thank you. Preserving your life total is uh, probably the better idea against a modern red deck for sure. So now the runaway steam can grows as all the red spells hit the board. Wizards lightning to the face. And this is a big draw. This is a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. Shahar's down to seven. This is lethal. Oh. Shahar needs to find a way to deal with all the threats on the board. And with Mastermind's acquisition, Shahar doesn't have a one mana card that can no. clean up all the creatures on the battlefield. He unfortunately needed to draw Kaya's Wrath there just to 
Stabilize here a little bit, get rid of these threats on the board. Yeah, per, yeah you know, it's one of those things we, we can kind of go back to that previous turn mm -hmm. where perhaps it was correct to cast Mastermind's Acquisition for something like a Lyra Dawnbringer yeah. and just hope that the Lyra Dawnbringer is what you have that's good enough to end up winning this game because now, I mean, Jahar, is, it's extremely unlikely for him to be able to claw back into this game. Let's see what he does here. He's thinking about it. Yeah, thinking so she, long and hard. He's saying, I wish this was a Kai's Wrath in my hand. I right. wish. I mean, that is the downside. Mastermind's Acquisition is not all upside. Of course, it gives you a very flexible card to put into your deck. However, it's a really expensive spell. It's a little slow. Mm. It's a little clunky. That's why you see many of these decks playing only one to two copies of it because it, of situations like this. Yeah. Mastermind's Acquisition for a Sweeper is not really the answer against these aggressive strategies. You want to just naturally draw those cards, yeah. not actually cast Acquisition to find them. Fortunately, no Moments of Craving either or any other life gain spell to help Shahar out here just a little bit. So does he have a one mana spell here? Something, uh, Sky, I've seen some lists play Sky Tether. You can oh, yeah? use Sky Tether. Healing Grace is a oh, way to stay grace. alive for one turn. Oh. Oh, maybe not. Let's, oh. So Shahar can use Healing Grace here to prevent the damage from the Wizard's Lightning and gain three life. So he'll go up to eight life. However, That's we have a 4-4 four, four Steamkin, a 3-3 three, three Steamkin, and a 2-2 two, two Lava Runner. That's nine damage. That's still going to be lethal damage. Ouch. All right, that is that game. Done and dusted, and Skybills is very pleased with that. Congratulations, my dear. Let's go on to the next game. We will now see the green-red aggro versus mono-white. Yes. And th th this is... A fairly interesting matchup because you would, a lot of people would think, well, you know what, the green deck has just all the bigger creatures, so yeah. it's going to be heavily favored. Well, that's not necessarily always the case because the green deck doesn't play a lot of removal spells. And the white deck, if you don't have removal, Banalish Marshall is starting to look pretty great. Venerated Loxodon, Unbreakable Formation. The white deck actually has a lot of ways to pump up its creatures. Mm -hmm. On top of that, it has the ability to play multiple spells in one turn, play a lot of one, play a lot of one drops, play a lot of cheap cards, play Loxana or even something like a Conclave Tribunal yeah. to deal with the big creatures that the green-red aggro deck can muster up. We might even see a race on our hands, right? opting not to block, instead just trying to get through as much damage as possible against the opponents. Yeah, I'm, I'm very keen to see this matchup. Let's go, aggro, let's go. Yeah, one of the more important cards that you want to draw, especially in the green aggro deck, mm -hmm. is Lanwar Elf. Being able to go turn one Lanwar Elf into Steel Leaf Champion. Oh, yeah. That's how you can kind of keep up with just the pure aggression yeah. of the Mono White Aggro deck. Opponents both keeping their opening hands. Pretty good hands as well. Health Collector, maybe not the one drop you'd want to see uh, if a Lenoir Elf is available. I no. think I'd happily trade off here. You just want to kind of pre prevent the damage. And mm -hmm. one thing, one good strategy when you play against the White Aggressive deck is you really, if somebody offers you the trade, you, you usually it? want to take it yeah. because of all the powerful Convoke cards that the White mm. deck has access to. So, in order to prevent the Convoking from happening, you just want to trade off all the creatures. Yeah. So, Merfolk Branch Walker finding uh, the fourth land, fifth land, for uh, Skybills, which means the Growth Chamber Guardians will be able to hit the board eventually and adapt straight away. This one feels a little bit worse to trade mm. off because, of course, even if you trade with Tithe Taker, you're still going to be you're still going to be giving your opponent a token and Shahar Shanhar with the classic draw. This is the one. <laughs> this is the draw that's won many games. The old history of Banalia into another history of Banalia. That's right. Oh yeah, that's always terrifying when that happens on papers. <laughs> it's like oh look how many things look you have. Look at all have. these knights. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not a fun feeling. Skybills of course doesn't know what she's in for just yet, with uh, the second history of Banalia in the hand there. And Shahar just kind of deciding whether or not he wants to attack with one of the Knight Tokens, but it looks like he's going to wait for the Creature Pump effect of the third chapter of History of Benali, which is going to happen next turn, before choosing to attack with those Knight Tokens. Right, so now it's just a case of let's get as many blockers ready as possible because these Knights are going to hurt. Yeah, I think Skybills wants to run out this Crawl Harpooner yeah. because it has three power, which is very important because once History of Benali goes off next turn, all the knights that Shahar has on his side of the battlefield are going to be 4-3s. Four 4-3s. Threes. Four threes. Instead, opting for the other Growth Chamber Guardian. And let's see how Skybills defends against this onslaught. 
And another fantastic draw Ooh, here from Shahar Shenhar. Oh. Legion's landing, meaning that he's never going to not have things to do with his mana because he's going to send the team here, mm -hmm. attack with everything, flip Legion's landing, and now he has an ability, the ability to make a 1-1 token every single turn, even if he draws lands for the rest of the game. Yeah. It's a little bit of unfavorable trades uh, for the Growth Chamber Guardians if she decides to block the Knights because both that Knight can kill both of the Growth Chamber Guardians. Right, and this is why, going back to the previous point that I made, it might have wanted to play out that Crawl Harpooner, cause, because at the very least, you get that clean trade with one of the Knight Tokens. Mm -hmm. Because you really, it really is in your best interest to get those Knight Tokens off the battlefield, because guess what? There's another History of Benalia about to go off on the following turn. Oh, yeah. So it's better to get those creatures off the board now, so you don't get hit again for four on the following turn. So Skyball's thinking about the blocks here, allowing the damage through from the Knights. Oof. She's down to four life. Ooh-wee. Of course, we get the lifelink token as well as the spirit token flying in the air. Shahar is going wide, going fast, and uh, yeah, causing causing some troubles here for Skybills on the opposite side. Yeah, and Shahar deciding whether or not he wants to run out Tide Taker here or just choose to make a token with Adanto the first fort. For example, if Shahar draws a land next turn, mm -hmm. he can play both Tide Taker and get an activation out of the Adanto. But it looks like he's going maximum aggression because Skybill is sitting at four life here. The Crawl Harpooner can get rid of that token. And As it enters time. the battlefield, it fights. Is it time? It's it's time. For the low cost of GG. Hi, Hi Galta. Well, we got the Galta on the board. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah, we got the Galta on the battlefield, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Four, five, here. six, seven. Oh, and look at that draw from Shahar. Oh, the no. The answer. No, wait, wait, wait. Wait. Just attack first, right? Just just swing. Well, no, you want to get. You got to get that Galta off the battlefield, attack for everything, and this, should be, this should be lethal. If it's not lethal, Skybulls will have no board left to survive. Wait, let's see. We have seven creatures attacking. If you block all the four threes, Skybulls will still take four damage. Yeah. So this is a lethal attack. So perhaps the Crawl Harpooner just a turn earlier to get rid of one of these knights. Yes, but given Shahar's draw, yeah, still that very was pretty crazy. For Sky that was pretty crazy. That that's yeah. a that's a board right there. As a mono-white player, you want to see that board, and you are very, very pleased when that happens. I love when that happens. <laughs> and so far, Shahar has basically just never lost when he plays the mono-white deck. Oh, no. So I wouldn't be surprised if he just chooses to go for that. The Thank downside, you, if Shahar does choose to play the white deck, though, mm -hmm. is if Skybills chooses to play the red deck, the red deck is slightly favored in that head-to-head -head matchup, yeah. and I don't know if Shahar wants to lock himself into a bad matchup. So Esper Control, the type of deck where you kind of have game against a lot of different strategies, yeah. maybe that's the one that he goes for. But he's running pretty hot with that mono white deck, and he plays that deck extremely well. I, I'm, I'm actually a little stumped as to like what he's actually going to choose to do here for Game 3. You can see both players now considering their options, deck A or deck B. What do I take? What is my opponent taking? Looks like Skybills is ready to rock and roll. Shahar, what you picking there, bud? Let's go. Oh, I am very, very curious to know what he's picking. Well, Skybills did just win with the red deck, so just, yeah. you know, if it's not broken, right? It's not broken. Don't and so. also, just keep in mind, there's a 50... Not a 50% chance, but yeah. there is a chance. One of the decks that Shahar brought was the White Aggro deck. And Goblin Chain Roller is such a powerful oh, yeah. trump card against the white aggressive strategies that uh, it wouldn't be surprising to me if Skybills opted to play the mono red deck. All right, Shahar on the play with the white weenies. That looks like an excellent hand. I see Unbreakable Formation in there. I hope we see that played as well. Pretty good hand from Skybills as well. Three mountains, Runaway Steamkin, light at the stage. Yeah. That and looks, I will say... Despite Chain Whirler being extremely e effective against the Mono White deck, if the Mono White deck is on the play, it can beat it. Yeah. Because you can get the draws where you curve out and you play that Venerated Loxodon, you curve out and then play Unbreakable Formation. Yep. Those are ways to play around the, the chain Whirler, Goblin yeah. Chain Whirler. Unbreakable Formation, also a way to get around any like, Wizard's Lightning or Shocks or anything like that. But uh, definitely, you want to play that in your first main phase. Give that Vigilance and the plus one, plus one counter. Oh, and this is a blistering start here. And Skybells, instead of running out the Steamkin, going for Lava Runner plus Wizard's Lightning mm -hmm. to 
kind of prevents Legion's landing from flipping this turn, and also just preventing, you know, that additional point of power that Shahar could get if he had something like a Venerated Loxodon. Good move there as well. The Getu Lava Runner can deal with the Hunted Witness or the Lifelink Vampire. Sky Bills is going Chain Whirler. Chain Whirler. <laughs> chain Whirler. Please. Oh, no Chain Whirler. No Chain Whirler. No Chain Whirler. Alright, so Runaway Steamkin here or Light at the Stage. Next turn for Shahar. He's, he's sitting pretty there at the moment with that Unbreakable Formation. Plus yeah, one, plus so one counters, flipping Legion's Landing. Yeah, this was the turn that where Sky Bills absolutely needed to find that Chain Whirler because 100%. on the following turn, next turn, Shahar is simply just going to cast Unbreakable Formation here yeah. and make it so that none of his creatures can die to Chain Whirler and also flip that Legion's Landing. Yep. So here we go. Main phase, Unbreakable Formation. Allowing him to give the plus one plus one counter and vigilance. The vigilance with this unbreakable formation is so good with Convocus effects because mm. you can swing and do your attacks and then, oh cool, I'll just, you know, tap my guys yeah. to either steal your thing or just pump them up another time. And here it is, unbreakable formation. What could possibly go wrong? Oh wait, nothing. All your <laughs> creatures are indestructible. Getting in the big attack, flipping Legion's Landing. We now have Adanto, the first forward, onto the battlefield, Allowing which is an extremely e witness. effective card against the mono red deck, producing an endless supply of 1 1 lifelink vampire soldier tokens. All right, but Skybulls does have two removal spells at her disposal. Let's get rid of some creatures on Shahar's board. And has to fire off that shock main phase, of course, because that Tithe Taker is on the battlefield. Mm hmm. So get rid of the Tide Taker potentially, get rid of the Dauntless Bodyguard perhaps. Just to limit the amount of damage that is flying through. Man, those card backs look great. I, li I like the, the tricky forest yeah. forest card back with yeah, the mono red I'm deck. Selesnia. <laughs> lies, all lies. And now Skybills has the ability to cast Wizard's Lightning at instant speed because she did target the Tide Taker with the shot. Yes. Hunter Witness in the hand of Shahar. And Shahar has a pretty safe attack with everything here. What's cool about saving this Wizard's Lightning is it does allow the Runaway Steamkin to block a two-powered creature and not die. Right. Which is always useful because of the plus effect. I mean, Skybells is certainly doing her best here to survive and she's gonna have reasonable blocks here. The Runaway Steamkin, like you said, can eat one of these tutus on the battlefield. Would it be best to go for the Vampire or for the Hunted Bills in terms of the block? I think Sky Bills is going to use the Steamkin to block the Lifelink token because you don't want more creatures on the battlefield. All right. And you also don't want your opponent to gain a bunch of life. Interesting. All right. Oh, the Dauntless Bodyguard must have targeted the oh, Lifelink yes. token. Oh, yes. Correct, correct. So now we have a choice here between Experimental Frenzy and the Lightning Strike. Actually, you can do both. So you can use Lightning Strike, oh, yes. get the fourth counter on the Runaway Steamkin, then use Empty the it. mana from the Runaway Steamkin to run out the Experimental Frenzy. So it's this possible. This could be a very good turn here. Skybulls might be able to turn this around if she can string together some spells. Oh, but oh, that's no. not what you want to see. No Experimental Frenzy. No Biscuit misbehaving like that. We don't want to see your friend on top of the deck. But keep in mind, Shahar just has a bunch of 1-1s one in play, mm -hmm. and Skybells has a pair of 2-2s two on the battlefield, so those yep. lifelink tokens aren't really going to be able to do a lot of damage, and Shahar only has that singular flyer, so Skybells definitely can come back from this with mm -hmm. that Experimental Frenzy in play. But Shahar is still able to create that 1-1 one, one lifelink token from Adanta, the first fort. What is it? It's a land. What's next? Okay. Lightning strike, good. Get that flyer. Good, good. Get, Get that him. flyer. Get him, off you go. Another oh, land, okay. unfortunately, off the top there for Skybills. On the end step, Shahar will create another lifelink token. Right, so and this is not quite lethal for Shahar. If Shahar finds a removal spell or a way to pump his team, it yep. would be lethal. But Shahar now has five attackers mm -hmm. to Skybills' two blockers. If Shahar chooses to attack with everything, Skybills will go down to one. All right, History of Vanalia applying some extra pressure there. Let's see. What is behind this mountain for Skybills? Will Shahar attack with oh, everything and throw away two creatures? Oh, imagine a chain Needs a chain whirler bad. Oh, oh, there it is! is! There it is! Goblin chain whirler on top for Skybills! Oh. This is exactly the time she needed it because oh. she was so close to that on the following turn. What a draw. And, and he another brings a friend. One. Hello, friend. 
Would you like to remove the rest of this board, please? Thank you very much. So now that's going to take the knight oh, token and perfect. the token from the hunter witness. Ooh, this game has more. turned around. Sky Bells <laughs> is now firmly in the lead in this game. Oh, more, more. Just more. Keep going. Keep going. Look, at, it's Let's not see. stopping. How many cards is that? Can't stop. Won't more. stop. Look at this. <laughs> This is fantastic. I love it when Experimental Frenzy does crazy things like this. Go. Go, little red things. Go. All right, now this is the kind of game I want to see, friends. Oh, and, and I like this uh, aggressive use of the Runaway Steamkin, hoping to find more spells with the mana, but it doesn't matter. I mean, look at this board. Look at what happened in what the course of just swing. one turn. That was insane. Goblin Chain Whirly, you rude, rude thing, you. All right, now all of a sudden, Skybills is in control. Another Goblin Chain Whirler. Hits the board. And uh, a Fanatic of Firebrand. Hi, friend. Yeah, th this game is basic. Oh, and, and lightning, lightning Strike, strike on top. by Benelish Marshall. Or we're just yes. going face. Let's you see. You can go Benelish Marshall, and then you can use the Firebrand to get rid of and the Knight token, and this should be the game. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh another Lightning Strike. Why not? Wait, wait, wait. Why yeah, not? One more. Why one not? More. Hey! Congratulations. Wow. What a turn. Wow. That was insane. That was one of the best experimental frenzies I've ever seen. That was ridiculous. She had one turn to find that chain whirler because what? Shahar had a lethal attack that turn. I, that was incredible. I believe the, I believe the appropriate Look, phrase is I she feels can't the same even. Way. I can't even. Congratulations. Oh my goodness. Congratulations, you have defeated a two time world champion yeah, that's in a, Shahar Shenhar. That's a good notch for the belt there, I'll say. Right. Wow. Insane turn of events there. That just shows you the power of Experimental Frenzy. When it behaves, it is just completely bonkers. Right. The thing is, sure, you can have maybe one or two turns where it kind of whips for you, but if the game goes on for three or four turns, oh, yeah. it will win you the game. And, you know, going into this matchup, going into that third game, I was really wondering, because Shahar has not really lost a game with that mono white deck. Oh. At the same time, this red matchup isn't exactly the best. All so right. I was really curious what he was going to go, and he was, he was like, you know what? I'm going to stick to my guns. This deck has done me well. I'm going to be on the play and try my best. But Skybill's squeaking it out there with that Experimental Frenzy. Wow. All right, we are ready to talk to Skybill's. Let's throw it over to Becca now. Becca, take it away.